Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. In today's podcast, I want to tell you all about an app called Libby. That's our public library app in the English speaking world. I also want to tell you how you can access it. It's actually very, very good. But before I do that, I just want to tell you where I am. So I left the house about uh, 10 minutes ago and I've walked to a local coffee shop. The sky is very angry today. It's very dark gray and the clouds are moving very fast. They're rolling by like thunder and indeed they look very menacing. We had a storm yesterday, I think it was storm Kathleen or Catherine, and it uh, left the place looking a little bit dark, dark puddles of water on the pavements, water on the tarmac, as well as the sky being very black. On top of that, of course, we have buildings which are grey and dark anyway. So today I have my umbrella with me because I just know I'm going to get caught in the rain later. But on the other hand, it is actually very hot and humid. It feels more like a tropical country. And it reminds me of my time in Arabia and Spain. When the rain comes, it's still hot and within a few hours the rain goes and that's kind of an unusual thing here so it's uh, it's very very interesting now I wanted to tell you about this app called Libby which is our library app and it is actually very very interesting and if you can get access to it I think you'll find it really helpful on your English speaking journey for learning. And I don't mean because it contains a lot of English books, which it does, but I think it's just because of the sheer variety that it has. I mean, of course it has books for English learners, but many of the books it has are for teenagers and for younger people. And those are the kind of books you need as you wean yourself off from learner's material and really move into uh, material suitable for British people. I think that's really, really important. Now, having said all of that, I'm not sure exactly how easy it is in your country to access Libby. But I'm going to give you a few ideas of what I do to access it and how you should be able to access it fairly quickly or fairly easily. Let me just first of all though talk about the benefits of it. So it has many many books first of all. You can also have those books exported directly to your Kindle some of the libraries which are hooked up uh, to this app Libby uh, they they also have a magazine shelf and there's loads of magazines and newspapers my local library gives me access to Libby and it also gives me access to press reader free and press reader as you probably know is uh, a premium based subscription service to lots of newspapers throughout the world. So to have access to that free and to have access to all other magazines that some of these places offer uh, is really quite something. Now let me just go on and describe Libby a little bit more. So Libby, at least in the English speaking world, is uh, operated by many many of our public libraries okay and 
it, it makes it kind of special because it feels local. I went to my local library uh, some years ago and I used to borrow books, but now I can simply log into Libby, put in my library reference number and have access to as many books as I want without having to go anywhere. As you might know, libraries are kind of dying. So there's uh, still one in every town here, but it's only a matter of time before they disappear completely. Everything is moving up to the clouds and government departments and government funded things like public libraries are usually the last to move to the cloud. But my local library offers me, I think most of their books in either Kindle or PDF format. And I can export them or I can download them and move them onto my Kindle. So it, it really is worth investigating. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that now. Well, first of all, let me just explain to you where you can get this app. Now, you can get this app from your Google Play Store or you can get it from your iOS App Store. Like any other app, it's widely available. And if you don't find it there in your country's app store, I'm sure you'll be able to download a version of it from somewhere else that you can use. Now, there's loads of tutorials on YouTube and on social media about how to use Libby. So you can have a look around at those. Uh, but the first thing this app is going to do is to ask you for your library card number. Now, if you're in the UK, you have to join a public library by actually going there and they'll give you a library card. I don't think it's actually possible to join online. I might be wrong there. So you can check that out and you can also ask a friend who lives in the UK maybe to help you access the system. If you're in America or you want to use the American library system, it's actually much easier. Now, let's explain what I have on my Libby app. So I have my local library, which I joined by physically going there. So I had a reference number that I use. And then uh, I joined my local city library, which is also online, but I had to go there to physically get a number and show them ID. But I also signed up for the New York Public Library and it didn't ask me for anything. Uh, I think it just wants to make sure that either you live in New York or that you're someone who's passing through there for a holiday or for a short time. So signing up for the New York one was relatively easy. Let me just tell you what you need for that. You simply need an address, a New York address, and you'll also need, I think they asked me for my email, and maybe my date of birth, maybe. I think that's, that's um, what they asked me for. So signing up there was very easy because I used my friend's address who lives there. Or if you've ever been to New York, maybe you can use your friend's address, your relative's address, or something like that. Uh, and you can simply sign up and have access to all of their stuff on Libby. Now, if you look around the internet, you'll find that uh, there's lots of other places that you can sign up free with Libby. There's libraries all over America, and I'm sure other places as well. So look around to see what's available. And when you have Libby, 
you can access their entire book collection. If you access a, a British library with Libby, then you can download the book in a DRM format to move to your Kindle. And in American libraries, it's even easier. You simply uh, log in and then it asks you, do you want me to send this book to your Kindle? And then the next time you open your Kindle, it'll be there. So Libby is definitely worth investigating and worth having a look at if you're looking for access to English books. Now, this morning, uh, I joined one of the American libraries. Uh, I simply looked online and I put in the question, okay, which Libby libraries can I join free? as a non-resident and it gave me a whole list of libraries uh, one was in florida one was in new york and there were other ones as well so really it's uh, quite amazing what you can access now how is this going to help your english exactly well it's going to help your english because it means that you're going to have a full supply of authentic english books and if you think of books like Harry Potter or those kinds of books, uh, you won't have to pay for them. They'll all be there free and you can borrow them for 21 days or 14 days if you prefer. If you'd rather have the books to keep, you can probably find them using Anna's Archive, which is another free legal way to obtain books. I don't have time to go into how it operates and how it's funded or how it's free, but I can tell you it's another great resource if you're looking for books. So I want you to spend some time today investigating Libby. You should be able to download the app without any problems and then look around the internet to see what you can find. Because once you're in there, it's so easy to move your books uh, to your Kindle or to read the books in the Libby app. It's great and it's free. And uh, feel free to ask me any questions about that the next time you meet with me online. And I'll be happy to help you get set up on that. That's all I wanted to say. So that's a great resource. Now today, I'm going to go into my real public library. I don't go there very often, but sometimes I like to just see what's happening there because it has a little community notice board. It's also a habit, isn't it, that we used to have as kids visiting the public library. So that'll be fun. And that's it for me today. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Let's talk again soon. See you. Bye.